All right, welcome everybody to another Facebook Live. This is Katrina Sawa with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. Talking to my good friend, Gary Barnes with GaryBarnesInternational.com. Hi, Gary. How are you? Good. It is, uh, it's just funny because I put a sweater on because it's kind of, it's rainy out, but I haven't even gone outside the house yet. I've got a fire roaring. I've been on a couple calls today where people are in the snow and they've had snow days and I'm like, oh, it's so nice not to have to leave the house. How about you? Have you left the house yet today? You're in Denver. Yeah, I'm in Denver, but I have an actual office. So I always leave the house. I find myself being more productive when I do. But uh, today we're gonna to be close to 60 degrees here and blue sky, sunny. You know what? Somebody was on the call earlier today They're from Colorado Springs, which is nearby you, and she said, oh, yeah, it's sunny here. Everything's great. Well, other people are like, ah. So, well, thanks for tuning in, you guys, and thanks for being here, Gary. Um, I wanted to bring Gary on because he is one of my speakers for my March event, Love and Money Live, and I've known Gary for a few years now. We know each other more or better now, I would say, than before we were just kind of like passing acquaintances online, right? And uh, he's a business coach, been doing this for a gazillion years. And I'll tell you a couple stats about him. But today we want to talk about productivity, time management, um, how to be more efficient. I'm super passionate about this because life is way too short and we don't get enough done. And that means we don't reach enough people, which means we don't make enough money. So it all stems back to being more focused and clear, I think. So, but I want to hear what Gary has to say about the productivity uh, tips and things that he, some of the things he's going to share at the event in March, but some things are different. Um, so Gary Barnes, let me just give you like a couple little tidbits of him. He has sold over $280 million in products and services over the course of his career. Let me just... Like, holy crap, right? And he's been a TEDx speaker. He's been on all the national media, PBS, NBC, ABC. Um, he's done a lot of publicity, I know that. And he has a lot of clients. In fact, he said his clients ranged in seven different countries. Um, and I know that you guys are going to love to meet him if you haven't met him yet. And hopefully some of his followers are here. And I'm new to you too, but Gary, why don't you tell him a little bit more personal side of why they need to, who, who you are. <laughs> well, you know, something that was unique to you for new information as we got started today is you didn't know that in 1988, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and was told I would be dead or in a wheelchair within 10 years. Now, I have never owned the illness. I've never owned, I've always said I was diagnosed with, which meant it was someone else's opinion. But I was 33 years old. I wasn't supposed to, I was out of the, the category. I, it wasn't something that I was uh, wanting or was expecting. And But it really brought up the idea of, okay, we have a timeline on this planet and we don't know where that end period is. And so instead of looking at time as something we use or we're busy with, it's how do we invest it instead of spend it? And so when we invest on a time kind of concept is that we're expecting that return. And a lot of people, my clients, when we start first talking about this, they go, I'm so busy. Well, yeah, but are you getting the benefit out of being busy? You know, what are the value statements? Are you getting the most important things included in your calendar? Right, and I, the word busy is something I'm trying to get out of my vocabulary as well because I, I don't want to just say I'm busy because then that sounds to my prospects and my clients that I'm too busy for them. And that may not be true. It's not necessarily true that it'd be just because I'm busy. So I like to say something like, I've got a lot of projects on, fun projects on my plate right now, which is something I like to say. How do you suggest people say stuff like that? Well, you know, one of the things is to know when you're full. It's not yeah. about being busy, it's being productive and being a, at service with our clients. And right. so how do we know when we have, you know, that limitation of bringing on another client, we start pushing things off and things falling off the calendar. How do we make it visible? A lot of times when we're busy, we don't know why we're busy, we just know we are. Yes, and a lot of people are doing the wrong things in their day-to-day -day activities. So their revenue-producing activities or their 
they, they call them admin tasks when really they're marketing. Sometimes I catch people doing that and then they think they're gonna put off their admin, which is really their marketing, wait a minute, right? So gosh, do you have any kind of, where do you start with people who feel like they have too much on their plate and they need to be more productive? Well, and so let me give you, I created a time management system that I will actually be teaching at your event in March. Yes. And it's okay. really neat because it doesn't replace anything anyone is already using. So if you're using Franklin, Day Runner, whatever it is, it overlays it. The wait, wait, wait. You're talking about paper. <laughs> uh, well, no, it's paper. It's paper. It's paper. Those are planners. Those are, in, right? Oh, they all have digital outlets. Oh. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Now, I'm okay. kind of old school. I have both. I use my, you know, my digital, but I also use my paper. Um, so, but here's... I divide it in a, a little different way because I look at value statements as well. And so there's four or five categories. It's called PINO, P-I-N-O-T. The first is like the wine. Pardon? Like the wine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so the, the P stands for productive time. This is real sophisticated. But here's the definition. Anytime you get a yes or no to your product or service very narrow definition. Most people think productive time is going to a networking event or being on this call or coming to an event or what, it, it, it doesn't fit in because when we have an agenda to close people at those, now we are not what I call safe. So P, I is indirectly productive time. It also has a very narrow definition. Any time that directly keyword leads to productive time. So those first two categories are very, very narrow. The third is in non-productive time. I told you it was real sophisticated here. And it really is the major part of your uh, busyness, if you will. And then O is other people's time, which is delegated time. And T is dedicated time off, not a weekend, not an afternoon, but where your cell phone goes off, you're totally cut off, you're sharpening your saw, you're we, you know, you're enjoying the, the rewards that you have created through your business. But let me go back to all of these categories. There's two other things. Is it high value or low value? Mm. That they all have that element. And so much of the time, we can be in indirectly productive activity, but low value, and we're not getting the results. Or another example would be non-productive time, and I'm going to use networking events. Most of the time, we've been taught that networking events is a high productive event. But by definition, if you go there thinking you're going to make a sale, you're probably not because people are going to go run away from you. And so what happens is that we have a situation to where it is a, a high value networking, but if we use it wrong, it's not intended to create a yes or no to your product or service. Can it? It can transform. But when we're honest, we can look at what we're doing and why we're doing it. Now, your first question is, how can we start? Once you have your calendar, these definitions, go back into your calendar for the last three months and categorize all of the things that you have had that you dedicated to your calendar, all that busyness. Yeah. Normally, about 80% of those activities are non-productive. Yeah, right. And they're not supposed to create revenue. It doesn't mean they're not valuable. So let's get an example of something that's not so productive because I'm pretty productive with my day-to-day. -day. So what do you see that people think is productive, but it's really not? Well, for me, it's like networking events because we can go to networking events five days a week, 365, whatever it is, and at the end of it, be broke. By the very nature, it's a filler system. It's where we go to make relationships and connections, not to close transactions. And so those transactions, those connections there can translate into indirectly productive, where we might have a coffee, we might have a conversation about our service that they find usable or needed within their life, which then can transform to productive time. But by its very nature, going to networking events can be just a busy event. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. And I always say you got to work the room 
And that, that phrase alone, though, sounds a little bit salesy these days. I almost cringe myself when I say it because things have moved to more of a, like, a real like relationship, kind of a, an environment. As a, But that's what I mean. I mean relationships, build relationships. But I say work the room because it just is what you do. And so you can do it in a non-salesy way, but you got to pull those interested people out of the event so that you can do a follow-up call or something. And right? so this, this is how I do it. I go in with a goal of connecting with one person. Now, I normally do and have more, but that's a bonus. Because right. every person I deal with, I want to know their pain points. I want to know yeah. about them. You and I started out just getting to know each other. We had no idea that we were going to be on this call or I would be yeah. coming to your event and you're coming to my event in August. Yeah. And so, you know, we have no idea that there's anything that currently leads. So it becomes organic. We're not out there converting people out of our timing or right. our desire. We're meeting their needs. And because of that, we become very safe. Yes. And one thing recently that I've, well, I started embracing it like, I don't know, 11 years ago, but I started talking about it more these days is when I go to a networking event, sometimes my mantra, what I say to myself before I go in is just be, just be love. Like, I know it sounds funny, but, and we're right before Valentine's Day, but I don't mean like in a weird, you know, way, but like being love is being open to, like you said, one connection. I don't usually have an attention anymore when I go to a networking event or an event. I don't have intentions anymore. I'm just going to go and be, and the right people always, let me yeah. just say, always come through and talk to me or sit next to me or I sit next to them. And then the universe just matches you when you have that intention of just being what um, my friend Nancy Matthews called the one, be the one for people, you know? Well, and so many times we have so many people wanting us to do their stuff. And it's like that tail wagging the dog. And yeah. we don't want to push them off, but I'd like to give a, a question to everyone on the call today that will allow them to know what to put on the calendar. Yeah. And that question is when we have an opportunity, does this opportunity take me towards or away from my ultimate vision? Not whether it's right, wrong, good or bad. And so if it's something that doesn't fit, I can go back to that person and say, right now that's not something that works for me, And but how can I support you? What is it that I can do to help you? Right. And it, it, it helps keeps us on track. Now, there is a supposition that we know what our ultimate vision is. And many business owners and entrepreneurs, sales professionals that I deal with, you ask them, well, what's the end goal? And they go, I don't know, make a sale, make the next sale. They're out there and they're they're running real hard and yeah. they're, they're worn out. Yeah. The days of just like going after trying to make a sale, they're so gone. I mean, I know this call was all about productivity and time management, but boy, has marketing changed. Yeah. Marketing is changing. And if you're not paying attention, then you're going to be left in the dust, right? Yep. So, well, all right. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I was going to say real quick, there are three keys that I teach that anyone will be successful if they do these three things. And number one, be seen. Don't be the best kept secret. Number two, be safe. And that's what we were just talking about to where there's no agenda outside of wanting to build a relationship. And mm -hmm. number three, to be relevant. That's where it's not just needed, but your perfect client sees you as their perfect solution because they now want it. And we don't know what the gestation period is, but when you have those three things, people are coming to you. I spoke over 50 times last year on PBS and they called me to do it. I didn't ask for any of those opportunities. And so it becomes where you are situated where people see you as that solution that they have instead of us chasing them. I don't know of anyone that likes to chase people and corner them and get them to do what you want. Or anybody that likes to be on the other end of that. <laughs> That's so true. So you said be seen, be what was the second be one? Safe, S-A-F-E. Okay. Be seen, be safe, be relevant. I love that. I was just trying to type it in and make sure I had it right. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I know we don't want to we don't want to keep you guys too long, but if you have any questions about being more productive, um, what about uh, one of the things I see that is probably the biggest um, 
thing besides people's organization of their office, their, their actual workspace, right? Because the more piles and chaos you have around you, the more like frantic you can get. Right. Um, and then I've had a client who, um, was a professional organizer yet her debt, her computer laptop was just chaos and she could never find any documents or anything. Cause she didn't know now this is just so you didn't know what you didn't know. She didn't know she could have folders within folders within folders on her. I mean, like so that's you know to people who know it's simple, but to people who don't know it's it's a huge thing to make your life easier. So those are just two examples of like those where I would have people start is in your space. Like where's your working space? What about you? Um, is it mindset stuff? Is it you know? You know, it's old, it's kind of old school again. If you touch a piece of paper, do something with it, throw it away. I, I love recycling. My goal is to fill up my recycling every day. But on the computer, we have a tendency to collect stuff without seeing it because it goes into a window. And that what I call rework. Every time I don't know where something is, that's rework. I can't access it rapidly. And so when we do that, we are using the one asset that we all have the same amount of that we cannot duplicate, and that's our time. It's the most valuable thing we have. But we don't treat it that way. We, we allow other things to come into play. And you said something, too. Maybe it's something that we have uh, activities that we shouldn't be doing. If you're at, say, $100 an hour, and I'm just using numbers, and you're doing something that a $20 an hour admin person could do, why are you doing it? That's You're not in your core. You're not. And normally the things that we don't enjoy doing, we're not good at. But right. as we're growing, that's you know really what we have to start looking at is, well, can we offload? That's the O in the time management. And as sales professionals, as small business owners, that's the hardest thing for us to do because we know no one can do it as best as we can. And letting go of some of that control. But without letting go, we cannot grow. No, oh, yeah, and letting go is huge. Some people will not let go of stuff. I get it. Oh, okay, we could talk for hours because I know you have a whole system that you teach on this. I mean, I have webinars on it as well. And you know, one of the things I think that has made me so successful and and so consistently profitable is staying organized and productive. And would you say that's not true for yourself? Oh, yeah. I mean, we have a tendency to want to keep things also in our heads. And we're going to miss things. We have our calendars. We don't, again, how do we know when we're full? Right. What is it that we, want? we don't schedule in time off. We don't schedule in things with our families. Um, do we have time for a, a quick uh, story? Yeah, but let's hold off one second. So let me just make sure people know how to get to the event if you're interested. Uh, I put the link in the chat uh, there, but in the comments, but it's loveandmoneylive.com, loveandmoneylive.com. It's March 6, 7, and 8. You have to be here. I have one other speaker coming, Alana Pratt from LA, talking about intimacy in your business. So it's super unique of a, kind of an event, you guys. It's, it's not just the practical, tactical productivity stuff and systems but we get into a lot of the stuff with your um, self-development and your support systems around you. So just want to make sure you join us because Gary is coming all the way from Denver. Alana's coming from LA. It's in Sacramento and it's an intimate group. You guys, it's an intimate group. So there's constant one-on-one -on -one attention with you. And the biggest thing people love about my events is they make money in the event. I can't, you know, not everybody does, but majority of people make money because we do easy yes offers. And so come, come, come. We'd love to see you. I'll put a coupon code in so anybody that's watching this can get in for 97 bucks for three days of working on your business. So, all right, Gary, tell a story and hopefully we don't get cut off. But <laughs> yeah, we'll, And I'm going to be there the entire three days. So I'm yeah. not coming in and speaking, so I'll be there. So okay. here's something that actually happened. My wife and I have date nights. We've been married now, well, this June will be 45 years. And so we go to a particular restaurant and that one evening there was a couple of that saw me and they came over to me and they said, Gary, it's providential that you're here. Our entire sales staff is next door. Will you come and speak to them? Now I'm on a date with my wife. According to the definition, it's non-productive, but high value. 
And so I could have an opportunity now to go talk to sales professionals that could generate business. So I could have gone over there with an indirectly productive time, but it would have been low productive because it wasn't something that, you know, I was there for. And I told them, I said, I'd be happy to, but I'm on a date with my wife. And they said, well, she can come too. And I'm going, no, 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 time out. So if I had violated that, it would have taken high productive non-value and turned it into indirectly productive low value. And right. what I told him was, I'd be happy to make a, another time for you to come in and address your, your staff. And we did. But I yeah. honored what I had on my calendar instead of allowing, again, that tail wag the dog. Yes. And people do that all the time, with, no matter what they, they've got on their calendar. They're like, a client calls, right? and need you right now. Well, the client can see you later in two hours or tomorrow morning or whenever you might have an opening. Uh, you know, it, yes, so that's such a huge awakening I had a few years ago uh, on that strategy. And and I do say no to more projects these days or at least I'll say, okay, quarter one, I'm gonna do this. Quarter two, I'm gonna do this. Instead of saying, I wanna do everything in April or in March. You know, it's like crazy. And it, it burns you out. You 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 end up not getting the broke productivity out of those efforts. And yeah. that's the other side is that people are investing their time, money, and energy and not getting the return. And so you're thinking they have a bad product or it doesn't work, and it's not that. They're just right. doing things in the wrong order. Yeah, and, and I know we have a few people watching us and hopefully a bunch more on the replay. Um, Gary is full of productivity tips, you guys. You should check out his website at GaryBarnesInternational.com. Uh, you know, go to mine. I have a bunch of free trainings on the resources page under JumpStartYourMarketing.com. But we want to see you live and in person. There's something about being live in person with a small group of people. I do it probably 10 times a year, if not more, actually, going to smaller events and mastermind meetings. And it is, my events are like under 50 people and it's, it's like a little mini mastermind because we collaborate, we share resources, people get in the hot seat, it's really good. Um, so I'm so excited you're coming out. Yeah, so we'll I think you guys, it. Yeah, we'll see you guys. Hopefully it's a sunny March, but who knows? Um, I don't even know if the groundhog saw a shadow. I have no idea, I don't pay attention to that. If it's even we'll be inside. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but uh, thanks for being here, Gary, and sharing your brilliance. And we'll see you all in March, if not before, or online, or please, you know, tell us what you do in the comments. I asked you guys to post your um, productivity tips, too. So you never know. We all need, uh, w there might be something we don't know that we need to know. You know, I'm always looking to be more efficient and, and get more done so I can stop working so hard. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now.